Michael David Riggs here. You know, I was reminded a day or two ago of Jeremiah 33, 3. One of my favorite verses, my family's favorite verses growing up, one of so many of our favorite verses. Call unto me and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. And, you know, we've claimed that for years and we still should, but we've also been unaware of the full context of Jeremiah 33, 3, I think. And with all that's going on in the world right now, so many, uh, actually it's not so many nations, but such loud clamoring wanting to destroy Israel. Um, by the way, that's <laughs> talking about an effort in futility. That ain't ever going to happen. Because God made covenant with Abraham, that's why. And um, Jeremiah 33, if you read the entire chapter, is actually God's promise to his prophet in Israel that there is no way under the sun, and you'll know what I mean by that in a minute, there's no way under the sun God's going to forsake Israel or refuse to have one of his descendants or the Levite priests doing his work there in Israel. God's going to fulfill his promise. And right there in that passage, though it's not spoken by name, is a veiled reference to the tabernacle of David and God's promise to restore it because he mentioned the Levites. David and the Levites. Call unto me and I'll answer you, God says, and I'll show you things that'll blow your mind. Yeah, that's my paraphrase. I'll show you great and mighty things which you don't know. You can't even imagine. That's an Ephesians 3.20 kind of thing is what it is. And then he goes on to say, if you can get me to break my covenant with the day and the night so that the sun doesn't rise and we don't have the cycle of light, day and night, then I'll break my covenant and my promise to Israel that David and his tabernacle and the Levites and those priests that provided 24-7 worship music over and around the Ark of the Covenant will not be doing their thing for me. In other words, if you can get me to break day and night and stop that, then maybe you can get me to ignore you being able to access my presence through prayer and intercession and worship. <laughs> that ain't happening. If you're if you're one of those that want that to happen, you or if you're ignorantly supporting those that want that to happen, you're in the most futile use of your breath and life that could ever exist. Cuz we're talking about the creator of the universe here. We're talking about God Almighty, Jehovah God, and His Son, Jesus Christ, by whom He made all things. That's what we're talking about. And so, I just encourage you, if you're frustrated and discouraged and a little worried about all that's going on in the world right now, it's part of it. Just, just read all of Jeremiah 33.3. There's some things God's got in store for us that are going to blow our minds and secure what David had and what the Levites around the Ark of the Covenant had. Worshiping in God's presence to the earth we live and breathe on. Shalom to you. God bless you.